10 years in and stuff blurs in. I may have played this game. I may be thinking of Enemy Zero. I may be thinking of any of the things Dust listed. I may just need therapy. <laughs> this game felt That's very true. familiar to me, and it was kind of strange this week. Welcome to New Game Plus. This is a retro gaming podcast where three guys spend seven days playing one old game, and then we talk about it. My name is Dustin. My name is Kenny. Nolan. And this is episode 452, and it is a director's episode! I failed to do it last time, and I do not want to forget this time, but the music stinger that you all just heard on the audio episode, at least, was actually created by someone from our very own community for us. Ooh. Uh, custom by made? Custom made. A stinger sound is bite. that little music sound bite. Yeah, something okay, like that. Okay, a stinger. And I it just stings something. a little bit, you know? Hey, well, thanks for making that. 88-bit music created it for us. If you want to check out 88-bits music, every 88-bit music's music, then you can search uh, by his name, Trevor Allen Gomez on Spotify. Thank He's you. got a few video game albums there. One is a, p a piano album for Celeste really good Ooh. yeah also he's got a patreon uh where he's um showing and sharing uh updates for the video game that he is developing what so okay. yeah nice. super yeah, talented follow people along. in our community very cool 88 bit music trevor allen gomez find all this stuff and thank you for that stinger ouch yeah. thanks question of the week what game did you play as an adult that you wish you could have experienced as a kid hmm. so i never many. go first yeah, you Take, go first. Yeah, you go first. The fr I, I didn't give this any thought outside of the m the first thing that came to my mind. That's always Same. that's usually good. No, I always give it a lot more thought. I'm, oh no, I'm, first first uh, I'm annoying like that. I usually I usually overthink. So the, I oh really? The, I <laughs> this do. came immediately to my mind. Uh, okay. Sweet it in two. We played it on the oh, podcast. Wow. It was this advanced, elaborate JRPG. And I played all the way through it. I don't think I finished it by the time we recorded the episode, but I did after. Yeah, yeah. And absolutely fell in love. This was like, was this this year or last year? It was, it was oh, recent. It was I know. this year, it's hard to I tell. think. I think. I, it's all just a blur. It's just one big, long video Nine game. years. <laughs> Question yeah. for you. Okay. If you would have, do you think that would have diminished your love for the Final Fantasy series? Oh, no. No, no, never enhanced uh, it. Well, listen, I can play. I augmented could, it at the oh, time. Okay. You only get one new Final Fantasy at a time. Yeah, and <laughs> I mean the same today. But um, the classic Final Fantasies were so separated from my experience. My first was seven, That's which a is, good was point. a lot of people's. Yeah. So I had seven, and then Three. I had to wait for eight. Then I had to wait for nine. You know, so. There's other, there's a lot of other time to play a lot of other JRPGs and including Sweet It Two. And could the, have been. yeah, the Super Nintendo, also that era could have been big for you too. But that's my answer. Kenny, you go, go second. You never go second. Okay, you always go second. I, I never go second. <laughs> um, <laughs> I also just had a gut reaction type. Uh, oh, I know my answer. I don't think it's as good as yours. Um, but I wish that I'd been able to play some of the Paper Mario games um, as a kid. Interesting. Oh, dude. If you would have played uh, the first one, you would have some serious love for it. Because you love the 64. We talked about it recently. You really love it. Yeah. It's, part, a, great, it's a great console. Part of the problem is the game wasn't out when you were a kid. <laughs> I mean... Uh, yeah, it was. I was making an uh, age joke. I know, I know, but... It might be true, though, actually. <laughs> but, I mean, if you're talking kid, it is true. But if you're you talking, old, uh, like, no. not fully growed, then I, it probably could have snuck in the end there. Yeah, man. It's not a, and it, it's not those games answer. are so good. I can't wait for us to play a couple of those in the series. Mainly Thousand Year Door. Nolan, you've never gone third. I've, I've literally never gone third. That's true. <laughs> um, mine is uh, my gut reaction. I didn't overthink it. Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube. Did you play any Resident Evils as a child? I, not as a child, no. <laughs> good. Um, yeah, probably a good thing. But in kind of high school, college, going into college, I played RE1. 
and that's where my love for the series like started yeah. i played the remake of one and i wish that i would have played four when it came out because it was gamecube era it is an action it is not your tank controls uh typical resident evil it's like an action game straight up i mean they want you to use all that ammo uh and i mean i i wanted to be introduced to the series a little earlier than i than i was and so i think i would have ended up playing all of them if i started with four but it's fine Say, to play later. saying i wish that as a kid i had had more resident evil exposure <laughs> feels a little bit like you know, I really need more therapy bills in no, my I could take it. life now as an adult. I could take it. I'm messed up. I may have, <laughs> I may have mentioned it before, <laughs> but do you know what my introduction to the Resident Evil series was? No, I don't. A book in middle school. I thought you were about to say the movie. The book's probably the better. Fact, <laughs> the fact that it was a book, I don't I know don't. if it would have been better. It's good, and it's terrifying. Really? Oh yeah. Is oh, it I, a it, novel or is it, is it more like, like a yeah, full novel. on novelization? Full what? on novelization. There's a series. I did series. not know that. Yeah. I just know the awful huh. movie and I, other I remember that scenes from the book even now because I was probably reading it too early. It was like 6th 7th grade something like that and yeah, wow. very very scary, very terrifying. That's a pretty funny introduction actually. <laughs> Those were some of the games that we played as an adult that we wish we would have experienced as a kid. And while there are plenty of games that we wish we could have played as kids, here's one that would have shocked our younger selves for sure. It's not good, but that segue was brought to you by ChatGPT, a rogue AI in cyberspace. Like in our retro game of the week, System Shock 2. Overview. First things first, we'd like to welcome our guest director to the show, Bill. We are so glad you're here. Take a moment, introduce yourself to us, to our NGP community. Let us know how you found out about NGP. And then after all that, you can tell us why System Shock 2 is the game that you selected. Uh, sure. Uh, good morning, guys. Nice to meet you all. Um, I've been listening to the podcast for four years now. Uh, really? October of 2020. Uh, I got a new job uh, delivering uh, medical supplies, and on the road that often I wanted to find a podcast to listen to, uh, searched up gaming podcasts on Spotify, and this was the first one that came up, and I've been listening to it ever since. Um, Ooh, SEO, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, um, let's see. Uh, well, uh, about the reason I wanted to play System Shock? Yeah. Or, okay. Um well, this game is, for me, one of my top five favorite games of all time. And you've already played three of my top five, and one of them is not eligible yet, so this was the only one I could pick for this. Um, I've been submitting it to uh, the uh, Patreon pools mm -hmm. for a couple years now. Quite a while. And it hasn't been <laughs> yet. No luck. But I'm like, I've already spent yeah. over $100 on We're just going <laughs> to jam through. So just, yeah. I put all forth, uh, put all, all the money forth at once, and get it, get it played. That's so, so good. What are the other okay. three that it. we've done? Yes. Um, my number one, Chrono Trigger. Uh, my number two, Baldur's Baldur's Gate. <clears throat> um, and my number four, Do Sex. Wow. Mm, that there's a, a lot theme. Of That's there's a theme. A theme. Yeah. And then, what's the game that is not yet eligible? My number three, Elden Ring. Ooh, Ooh. Nolan can't wait. I mean, well, it's gonna he's be a gonna while. have to. That is a it's long a, time. Well, from I now. know a while, but yeah, that game's. Do you amazing. think when a game like that, maybe not Elden Ring, because again, that is a long time from now, but a game of that caliber rolls around, that there will be people competing to become director so that they can be the one to push and talk? Oh about yeah, that like game? multiple people. Like, no, that's my pick. Right, right. Yeah, probably. I think it'll happen with Dark like Souls that. One. You think? Yeah. Wasn't that 2009? The... Are we not? 2011, I think. 2011. By the time so it rolls it. around, uh, it'll be so cheap if we don't change Patreon prices because of inflation. <laughs> That's true. It'll cost the same to host a director's wow. episode yeah. as it will to like go to McDonald's. A thousand dollars at McDonald's. Well, Bill, we're so glad you're here, and we're so glad that you yeah. brought to us System Shock 2, a 1999 action role-playing first-person shooter survival horror immersive sim. 
Yeah, I was having trouble picking <laughs> yep, one I'll this take week, it. but yeah, it's pretty much. I don't know if all that's necessary, but uh, no, um, I think I think it's just an action role playing game, in my opinion. Yeah, I think I, I, would I usually pick... refer to it as a immersive sim personally. Okay, then we don't have to spend too much time here, but I'd love to hear your explanation as why it's an immersive sim in your mind first and foremost. Uh, it shares a lot of the characteristics of um, the main games in that genre for, to me, um, s starting with um, Ultima Underworld, then System Shock, System Shock 2, Deuce X, um, leading into the more recent ones like uh, the Dishonored series and uh, Prey by Arcane Studios. Um, they all share a very similar gameplay style. Mm. Immersive Sim is primarily defined by like player choice is is that am i understanding correctly there yeah they're all a first person shooter type um interfaces more or less but there's a lot more you can interact with in the environments and oh, okay. usually some sort of inventory management and more open world ish um type of uh, quest structure yeah. and when you think okay. about there aren't a ton of games in that category i don't think that that check all those boxes. There are some that do, like you know, Half Life. Deus comes... Ex, I would assume. Well, I don't even know if Half Life would be considered. No, I think that that's straight. That's just a first person shooter. You don't really have game, RPG yeah. choices. It's not as no, open. yeah, yeah. It's just a story, F FPS. Yeah. The I... lines are blurry. Sure. The lines are blurry. You can take any or all of those genre uh, delineations that I provided. It. it is on PC. So this is one of those that we think is somewhat rare, but ends up at the end of each and every season being our primary played. console. Yeah. But this, a lot of games are PC and something else. This is this is PC. This, this is PC, and it feels PC. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's Absolutely PC does. only. Usually they ended up with at least one console port, like a, a big PC title like this, but this one is tried and true, like PC it, game. In mind though in my mind though, this one feels PC only complementary, not feels PC only derogatory. What <laughs> is that? Because that mean? that that can go both well, ways. Well, sure, you can make that opinion, but <laughs> you're uh, 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 that's up for the person that's <laughs> playing it to decide. Sure, I just... I think there are both complimentary and derogatory um, uh, parts of that for this game. I agree, and I just... Sometimes when we say that, it comes with connotations of difficult to play today, kind of cumbersome. Like, there are, there are associations with that thought that I don't know are com that, that are as valid with this game as with some others, so... I guess the main thing being you're not going to get a virus when you download and play this No, game. you're saying Is that what you're saying? <laughs> right. Well, you might. One of one of many things I'm pointing out, yeah. Game was developed, uh, co-developed by Irrational Games and Looking Glass Studios. It was published by Electronic Arts. But most importantly, it was directed by someone named Ken Levine. Hmm. Where has I heard that before? Yeah, Ken right. Levine. He's been around. Legend, Bioshock director designer yeah uh, director. D yeah he's behind both. bioshock so i was really excited to play this game i've always heard of it as bioshock being a spiritual successor to this game specifically right. he worked on it at, i think actually irrational games and bill you might know is uh, a group of developers that left looking glass made their own thing but then kind of came back together to yeah partner that's on what this, i heard yeah. which i think is kind of cool right yeah i believe ken levine worked with Looking Glass on Thief the Dark Project yes. first, and then he left to make his own studio and started up System Shock 2. Yeah. And now he's developing Judas. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Is that still going to... Is it going to happen? They're not going to oh. cancel it, right? It's going to happen. For okay. Sure. You have insider information? Yeah, Ken's, <laughs> Ken and I. Okay. I, I have a problem this week that you guys can maybe help me solve. Maybe. And don't say the word Bioshock because I'm not talking about Bioshock. Okay. Therapy. I distinctly remember that name. All, yeah, that's a different conversation. <laughs> uh, we'll have that one off air. Uh, why did this game feel so familiar to me? Deus Ex. Because you played Half-Life and Deus Ex. <laughs> and, because, and because I played Dead Space. 
So when you play, yeah, there's some dead space. When you've yeah. played Half Life, Bioshock, and Deus Ex, and if you've played Dead Space, you 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 know what this I game just, is. I just went through, but it was I I, I got I you. Feel like it was more than that. There were moments, like in that first. It, there were moments. Well, I I have a throat. Get over it. Uh, there were moments like when you first walk into that uh, area that has like the dedicated medical bay. Yeah, that Kenny, I I've swear got you, I have seen before, uh -oh. and maybe I dreamed it, maybe no. I've played this game and have forgotten, no. maybe I've watched someone play this game, or else there is a literal thing in another game that looks exactly like that moment, also in a game that feels like this, okay. and I don't know why. Nolan tried. Am I crazy? I'm, I'm trying to find it. Kenny. So my okay. answer therapy is not far off. Kenny. <laughs> no, it's not completely unjust. And I played a game without Dustin one time. <gasps> It is a. It was a story. Snowboard game. kids. No, <laughs> I'm trying to find the freaking name of it. It had like hacking and stuff in it, or maybe yeah, this is a different. Yeah, it game. was in space in a ship as well, and it was what? really right. goofy. It was not this Among kind us. of game, but I think maybe that's what you're thinking of. I'll find it later in maybe. Enemy Zero. Enemy Possibly. Zero is... I don't know. Enemy Zero. Ten, Enemy years, Zero. ten years in and stuff blurs in. I may have played this game. I may be thinking of Enemy Zero. I may be thinking of any of the things Dust listed. I may just need therapy. <laughs> this game felt That's very sure. familiar to me, and it was kind of strange this week. Well, I can tell you that we collectively have not played System Shock 1, the, the first right. one oh, in the yeah. series. Yep, and I realized that. Uh, but this is the sequel to it. Not only the game that followed, but the story that followed as well. So, uh, I believe it's some 40 years or so after the events, the concluding yeah. events of, of System Shock. And in this game, you are a new military recruit stationed aboard the Von Braun an experimental faster than light spaceship on its maiden voyage and everything goes well the end one never yeah. one ever happen yeah uh you you are faster we about to get travel. into ftl conversations <laughs> yeah. right now <laughs> i won't do that to us <laughs> no we're gonna have to find some other way to either bend time which that's gonna have to be what it is but we'll, we'll yeah like wormholes or right. some like equivalent we'll do that on a bonus not actually episode. moving yeah. faster than than light yeah not gonna happen i agree <laughs> uh and i'm glad we're all on the same page you heard it here first on the new game plus retro video game podcast <laughs> yeah. uh you awake from your cryo sleep and to a ship in chaos things are not going well the, the crew has been slaughtered and something alien is on board you are then guided by the voice of Dr. Janice Polito, and uh, you set out to survive, hopefully. We now have a bonus episode exclusive for those on Patreon. Episode is not an over-exaggeration. It's a full it's a episode. And it's an episode that you get to be a part of. Yeah, it's called Expansion Pack, and uh, semi-regularly, you get to be a part of the conversation, and uh, we're going to debate, and we're going to uh, scream at each other. We're going to talk about video about games. Things. Yeah, we're, we're going to scream mostly, though. That's that's kind of the point of it. We'll, yeah, we'll be like goats. You roast us. We roast you. Find out more information at patreon.com slash ngppodcast. Gameplay. We've made a couple references already in overview, but I'll bring it up again. Uh, and Dustin said it immediately when he before he took one step in the game in the first play, and I agree. Heavy oh. Half-Life vibes. Heavy. And this game came out one year after Half-Life 1. So it could kind of make sense that, you know, maybe there's some uh, influence there, but perhaps not. It's It's got its own engine and everything, of course. But uh, just in the initial setup of the game, you in the way it controls and the way it handles the first person aspect you start with a, a wrench i mean in in half-life i suppose you've got the the crowbar but you you've got the wrench yeah which, wildly wildly different which bioshock does have the the callback the to, wrench to the wrench yeah, it does. oh great <laughs> major yeah. callback yeah it's 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 great um but but all of that just in in the setup did feel familiar not derivative just familiar to yeah. to half-life and i think that's fine and actually good for us going into the game just to know a little bit <laughs> a little bit know what to expect at at first but it it, it quickly separates itself from half-life in the game mechanics very quickly 
Yeah, this this being a PC title, you are moving around with your mouse and keyboard. And so, WASD, yeah. Best. And WASD, Best. right. So very familiar setup for those of you who do any kind of PC gaming. Um, but that's what you'll be doing in this game is looking around with your mouse and interacting. There is a kind of interesting answer to the whole sort of menuing problem that some games have run into where they sort of give you tab as a shortcut between kind of two different modes of interface here that I think was really um, interesting and and uh, picked up and felt really smooth for me as a way of sort of popping into like your I'm doing RPG stuff versus popping back out into interacting with the world that I um, really appreciated and felt a little unique to this game, but for the most part, feels like a, a PC Yeah, shooter. I mean, it feels like you're just opening up your inventory to do things there primarily, right? Like uh, when yeah, it's either shoot mode or I don't remember what the other one's called, but it's basically just inventory management, moving things around. Uh, doing research. I mean, th there's a lot of. <laughs> it's one of those RPGs that has like kind of a lot of different mechanics going on. Um, some behind the scenes, some in front of the scenes. Uh, you, at the beginning of the game, you're making some choices that are going to build out your character's stats in a particular way. It doesn't predefine the way that you have to play the game, but it does set mm -hmm. you up in a particular way. Bill, kind I'm of assuming. Before you realizing. Oh, before you even on. know what's going on, <laughs> Bill, I'm assuming you've played this game many times. What's your like go to way to play the game character build route you choose? You have three at the beginning, right? Uh, personally, I enjoy starting with OSA for some psi powers at the beginning and then moving into energy weapons later. So I have a good way to get rid of uh, robotic enemies. That makes a lot of sense. I went Navy. I also went Navy is probably the easiest way to go. It felt Ooh, well. I looked up again. Easy mode. Um, because I did. I, I went Navy thinking my grandfather was in the Navy, so that's cool. So I went Navy <laughs> and found out that yeah, that is actually kind of not the easy mode per se. There's it's like the modes. recommended first playthrough, oh, best quality of life. Yeah, I, I would say yeah. so. Yes. Okay, cool. Because it is the one that you're looking at. Because there's three choices: two left, right, and then the one in front of you. Um, but I did look up a guide because I was making decisions and quickly panicked. This is one of those games, and it turns out I was right. This is one of those games to panic. That <laughs> to panic? You, I mean, well, yeah, that's a for different many conversation reasons, in this for game, many For many reasons you panic in this game, <laughs> but also yeah. about just the meta progression of your character. Um, you can make big mistakes, and the game lets you, and you can get later in the game and make it very difficult for yourself so i'm glad that early on i i did a dustin and i pulled up a, a guide on on which hallway to go down and then like which things i was allocating later so can i you... should have done that i didn't probably didn't primarily that. probably because i started the game by recording the first play. sure doing the first and, play. and then i just played off of that yeah i will say the osa looks the most fun like uh, psionics yeah. look really fun to like specialize in. Well, agreed. And this is the question that I have for Bill because what it felt like to me is that regardless of which character choices you make at the beginning, in my mind, there's really only three ways to play this game. It's either you're playing primarily where you are uh, a gunman. You you know you're using the guns that you find the launchers the different things or melee and that can even be combined into one guns and melee but melee where you've but because the only melee is the wrench at least for a long while oh. there's this branch thing that's really op apparently i didn't use it but. and then and then the third being your psionic abilities like that the, and i guess you could have a fourth where you combine them but i don't think that's the strongest thing to do you say that. I feel like you leave out nerd as a valid playthrough option. It's here. not a valid playthrough option. It absolutely is. Yeah. Hacking is. You're still going to have to fight all the enemies that are coming after you? Sure, but you're going to have more bullets to do it from items that you've collected. Turrets you're going to have packed. more. Right, you're not going to be killed by security no as easily. Like, that whole route is absolutely valid. Let's let the professional Getting tell us. research updates so that you can be stronger against stuff. Yeah. I just, I'm mad you left one out. Yeah, I wouldn't go fully uh, technical for a whole playthrough because there's not 
it's good for like luring enemies into turrets and such, but whether in the places where there aren't turrets, you're going to need to be able to use other weapons in the same time. But yeah, um, I would agree that those three are probably the main three ways to play. Yes, uh, there are three different melee weapons you can go to for actually though. Only three. Yeah, I would have I would have thought there'd be more than that. And hmm. then I would Maybe. just say there's two yeah. ways to play: weapons and well, no, psionics. No melee or is mix. Totally valid. I just you would want more options. You know, you might get bored of sure. the wrench. <laughs> All yeah. I know is if giant alien things are running at me, I don't want to have to beat them with a tool. <laughs> I want to <laughs> shoot them from afar or kill them with my mind powers. Like this seems obvious. Well, one of the yeah. one of the big parts of this game is resource management so it's not like you just had infinite True. ammo you yeah. are you are running on uh, just the few bullets that you can find so every shot counts so this is not a a, a prey and spray kind of situation this is a yeah. slowly walk to a corner lean around it <laughs> and get a lean. shot or two off it's great oh the lean is that, nice for that, sure those two things right there is where I could see the argument for someone saying survival horror because limited ammo with zombie things coming at you. Yeah, yeah that's that's scary. Um, but the game also... There's also just vibes. Oh, sure, yeah. Just setting the tone. But resource right. management, but then like the, also item management. I love me a grid-style inventory. Slap on a you Diablo. You just love Resident Evil. No, I, I mean, add add Diablo style, Resident Evil style inventory on any game, and it's better. I, I'm Subnautica sorry, just, has it. It does it. I need yeah. By the way, other Bill, uh, I am playing Subnautica. He wanted me to play. Yeah, many, yeah. many times. But I see. I don't love oh, limited so inventory. I want ninety nine high potions, ninety nine no. Phoenix <laughs> downs, ninety nine. Yeah. No. You're not getting that here. No, no. you're not. You, you, not everything at all. takes up a slot, and it, it fills up really quickly. Admittedly, well, it's it's not a very big inventory. Yeah, no, it and, does. And you're not you're I'm, not finding a backpack or anything to expand and I'm, that. I'm such a hoarder that that Same. moment where I pulled up my inventory and it was full of chips and cola and booze <laughs> and <laughs> and plants. But you had a plant. I was like maybe I need this for some reason, and then like chemicals that it literally warns you there's too many of these don't pick them up until you need them for nope. research and i'm like nah I'm nah, i them. definitely need them if you're giving them to me it was not the best choice for what this game wanted you to do yeah one of the unique i'll say unique systems here are is the uh, psionic uh, disciplines or, or abilities mm -hmm. um it's not unique because it's just the, the sci-fi magic in this world but uh it is and i i felt like it's it's very much like magic in other games that i that i'm used to in the sense that um uh, it's fun to play with but a steep learning curve like there's a and there's a lot like i'm never the mage because that's more for like kenny to figure out all the nuances it, there. it usually yeah that archetype in general and across fantasy media is it, it takes a little bit like it, it's it's not a strong early takes some ramping up and you have to understand the the workings yeah. of it and this system specifically scared me so i avoided it i was like i don't i don't know if i'll be able to make that viable it usually pays off, though. Oh, oh sure, it definitely sure. does. Yes. Big time. Yeah, but give me a big sword or a small wrench, and I feel I feel more safe. But yeah. the magic system here is uh, your psionic abilities, and you've got offensive uh, a set. There's a lot of them. You've got an offensive set of them, defensive set of them, uh, healing set of them, Utility. and then kind of utility yeah uh right. and, and so for, like for some of the offensive like you've got an ice uh, uh, an ice ability a fire ability uh, for some of the defensive abilities you have like barrier. radiation absorption or barrier healing is just regen or you can ab absorb some hp from enemies from time to time status oh there's a whole status set of things where like uh you can increase your stats or go invisible and then you've got some that are just like uh like you pull force yeah. pull or uh show enemies on the mini map things like that but there's i i don't know how many but dozens yeah bill there's a bunch does yeah. that um so when you're using it an arm is like on the screen and you're holding a ball and it's like a usb plugged in your arm i love the look of that it's so sci-fi do you <laughs> does that do you get another one like does it upgrade or no it's the same thing? no it's not no it's just it okay that's but, cool though. but bill you have a lot of experience with the psionic discipline so 
and, and I think you said, but it's a completely viable build to go full bore on that. And if so, like, what are end game? What are you? What are you doing? What What's some of your m main abilities you're using? Uh, the main problem with going full psi is that um, most of the attack spells barely damage the fully robotic enemies. So having some way to deal with robots late game is oh, is difficult. Resistance. There is a max rank. A spell that will like stun robots for a while, so you can just run up and whack them with your wrench afterwards while they're stunned. So that's one way you could deal with it. But um, there's also uh, like a teleport you can get later on. You set a teleport point, and then you can teleport back to that from wherever you are in that level. Um, there's a uh, I can't remember any more of the really high, really high end ones, but the one I probably end up using the most is um, the one that recharges your uh, battery items. So if you're playing oh, an energy nice. weapon energy weapon type character you can just recharge your energy weapons with psi power oh that's great i i think that this is one of the earlier games where you've got different ammo types uh pr probably not the first one but one of the earlier games the reason why i'm even bringing this up is because you said the psionic abilities don't necessarily do good damage to to robots well you've got ammo that you're able to pick up along the way that some are i'm not a, a gunman but some are uh, anti-personnel uh ones which do more damage to organics and then you've got some that are uh do do greater damage to robots yeah. or machines and um so like you're, it, it's really encouraging you in this game when you're using the guns to swap between some of these ammo types because it really does significantly more damage to those types of enemies. Yeah, and I think that adds to the sim aspect of oh of yeah sure what we were saying because yeah. it really wants you to it, it it's really situational like this the the combat of this game it's not like oh yeah, I'm just going to auto-level up and power up and invest into just a general gun-like right. thing. It's like, no, check your ammo. What are you fighting? And the game isn't... The combat of the game is interesting in the sense that it's not overwhelming you most of the time. There are some moments in the game where, they, where they're kind of swarming you and you have, you have to make some quick decisions. But you'll be exploring yeah. and just looking and it's kind of ambient and quiet. And you'll hear a noise and you're like, uh, I don't like that, but it's totally something around the corner coming. And then boom, music cues up and you're, in, you're in combat mode. And I, I love the situation, the um, yeah, it's situational. And I think that's a really interesting way to go about exploring a ship that is, has been taken over by something. Yeah. Yeah. They really reward you in finding all of the things you know, mm -hmm. hidden items and even level progression. They're really good about like making you get items that are in a certain place that are going to make you be aware of your surroundings and be observational. And then during that, they do such a good job of like passively storytelling with the setup of the ship and the things that are moving in the background and voices that you're hearing, uh, the the visions you're having of you know these ghosts that that's kind of that whole play on on size stuff and so it really is an an interesting sort of way of of presenting this world and interacting with it that's very much not run and gun it's take it slow look around you be aware be tactical be thoughtful or you're gonna be in trouble because this is not an easy game i think that the story that was is much more interesting than the story that is happening in the moment so let me <clears throat> set that up the kenny you you pointed out there's a couple of ways primary ways the story is being told one is through these ghostly apparitions that you're seeing every once in a while but then the primary way is through these audio logs now by 2024 today we've played many games that tell a story through audio logs so that's a whole conversation we can talk about that again i think this is one of the earlier ones mm -hmm. with uh sure. th that kind of tells a story through this this mechanic um, but you're finding these audio logs so that you can try to decipher over time what happened to uh the ship and and the people on the ship it's it's very nice of them that they left the audio logs in chronological order for you throughout the ship so that yeah. you can find it in the order of what happened but happy accident oh yeah it's a happy accident but you're listening to those uh, as you go throughout that is the more compelling and interesting 
story to me than what's happening in the moment. Because I'll say what I felt like in the moment was our, our main thing was right. Get up to deck four for a while was get up yeah. to deck four and, and meet with the senior systems analyst of the Von Braun. So that's what you're trying to do. You hear her voice talking to you throughout the time, but this is what it felt like. Meet me on deck four, except the power's out. So go to engineering and restart it, except the security doors are sealed. So get the code from medical, except the person with the code isn't there. So go to the crew quarters, except, you know, like that, that was what it was the whole time yeah. to try to get there. And it wasn't as compelling to me. I, see, I, see I felt, I felt like that had more icing than the normal, here's a locked door, go find door key number two, you know, um, it, it, to me, I know it's still very video game tasky. Like it did make you go explore all of these things and figure out these situations. But I felt like it did it in a way that ha had me moving through the ship and seeing the different areas and feeling like this was a place that people actually lived and that certain people mattered more than others because they were named and had higher security level access. And that's when you're starting to see the ghosts. And so, I don't know, I saw that same thing, but felt like, in my view, they were doing better at that than most games and that I did feel more immersive because of it. it, it it's a video game. It's going to feel a little quest tasky sometimes. But in my mind, they were trying to, to code it in the experience as, as well as they could. And I do think when those two things converge, so the audio log plot versus what's happening now, when that finally does come kind of that kind of crossover later, I think it's a good payoff. But to the point about taking you from point A to point B to point C... I do think where they didn't cut corners, and I super appreciate it, is the environments of this game. They're fantastic. I mean, you're on this ship, and it's a huge ship, and it should feel that way. But oftentimes when games have that setup, you've got a lot of reused assets. You've got not a lot going on in terms of just the lore of the surroundings. But in this one, I, it, it, they, they, they did it. I mean, it felt sprawling. Um, you'll come across like a Zen garden one moment and like the music shifts, but then like you'll open up a door a second later and someone's killed themselves in a really t awful way. Like it's, they, they really set the tone with those environments. And I think that helps not, it helps take away the taskiness of what you're talking about. In my opinion, I think the environmental storytelling is a big thing here that you just kind of referenced um, because, and, and Kenny, you mentioned it just a, a short time ago, but this is not doom in the sense that the corridors are flooded with enemies. And you're just sprinting straight, oh, like no you stopping. Might, this might be an over-exaggeration, but you might go a half hour without coming across an enemy. It's more so just you're slowly walking around the ship, exploring some rooms. A piece of the wall falls off here because the ship is in disrepair. You find a body here and an audio log here, there. Um, it's, it's not, most of the time, it's not just flooded with enemies that you're having to fight. Honestly, in, as far as I got, there was probably only a time or two where I was fighting more than two enemies at any given yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, often if you're fighting hordes of enemies, it means you did something wrong yeah. <laughs> and that's the game teaching you. This is pro there's probably a better way to do this. Um, Absolutely. Because yes, you will die fast and run out of ammunition and uh, you got to, I already said it, this game isn't super easy. They're really smart though about giving you in game on the ship, even lore appropriate reasons, which is great for you regenerating and continuing your journey, which I thought was really cool. Instead of just like giving you save points and then depending on it or auto saving every once in a while, they've got these bio regenerators. I forget what they're exactly called, but that's sort of your, your flags. Chambers? You're kind of, yeah, you're kind of yeah. <laughs> uh, progress points where things restart once you do die. If, if you do often like me, because oh, that part um, felt felt very Dark yeah. Souls as well. Because I mean, you're not losing all your your souls. In this case, you're losing money actually for that. And money is like the resource in this game to upgrade to repair. Like it's it's a very important um, resource, and you do lose some for respawning. So it, it kind of felt a little Dark Soulsy to me. Y'all weren't just spamming quick save all the time because that's what I was doing. No, oh, it's yeah sacrilege especially before hacking because I, dude we got to talk look, about hacking yeah kenny i would have loved to go nerd like i would uh, that's how so i'd play do it 
No. Bill said it's not viable. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Bill said, it's not for me. easily viable. I didn't get to late game, but it was a very helpful starting skill. Yeah, no, I, I put, no, it's I a, put a lot into hack. Skill. Oh, yeah, it is a mandatory Everyone skill. Everyone needs it. That's the thing that I was talking about with the anxiety about You can build. lock it. Yeah. If you don't spec it, it you, you are really gimping yourself. It's not good. So, But I don't like it. Really. Look. I think they got better <laughs> with it in Bioshock, although I remember mm. recently that the amount of times you had to do it was out. out and it was a stupid landish. puzzle thing. Yeah. yeah, but here it was stupider. You're just having to find three connected blocks, and I think often there wasn't a solution, so you just had to refresh the puzzle and, and find it again. I, I didn't love it. I agree. Yeah, they definitely improved on that in Bioshock. Oh, okay, okay. Bill, I'm glad you said that because I was th I thought you were going to defend it. I think it's <laughs> I think it's good to have in this game, but it is so central and and like I said, it is mandatory because of how good it is throughout the game th yeah. between hacking cameras, uh, uh, turrets, and just doors and doors, chests to get new everything, an more ammo and yeah everything it's like if you played skyrim and didn't do lock picking like you just you, you need it <laughs> and i the mini game's fine but i it just it felt weird and if you don't spec it you're screwed and i think well, that's bad i think that's you really can bad. you can find some access codes through other people's uh audio logs and pdas and stuff like that bill Weird question. Do you recall the code for the first door you come across? Uh, yeah. 45100. Oh. Bill, what, the reason why he remembers, uh, well, probably because he's played it many times before, but he was very patient. And if y'all recall, he asked, all, all he asked is one thing from us, that we would, uh, that we could play this game and do yeah. the episode last week for episode 451. And we... Aww. That we, would have been so perfect. We failed Bill. him, Bill. But but it's not just for this game, Bill. Bill, you said that there's something unique about four five one for these immersive sims. Uh, yeah, actually, starting with the first system shock, um, the the first door code you come across always includes a four five one, pretty much. Um, so system shock one had it, and then Ken Levine brought it back for this game, and ever since then, pretty much every immersive sim. Do that's kind of leaned into that. Yeah, Bioshock, uh, Dishonored, Prey, all of them have had their first door code be a four five one. Usually zero four five one nowadays. Wow, that's so good. That's what about four, so eight, fun. 15, 16, 23, 42. Stop talking about Lost. Oh no gosh, one cares. he did it again. Got him. <laughs> uh, I guess. Hey, last thing here for me. What do y'all think about the enemies? We've only generally talked about them. We haven't specifically talked about them. Uh, I don't want to talk about the monkeys because they can die and oh go to HE double. The like, monkeys are horrifying, let me tell you. They're so annoying. They're so small. But, um, they're just out of place, and it was unsettling. I don't know. I don't like it. Yeah. I, I, th I think that the many are a great threat throughout this game because yeah. of a few things their look is whatever you know it's nothing it's nothing crazy you've seen it in many games it's very zombie like but they talk to you and they whisper and it's just very ominous uh presence on the ship and i i i like them as like a thing but i in terms of like their design and stuff that's a different discussion i guess but I like yeah it. Bill, are you good with the mini? Does it work for you? Uh, yeah, totally. Um, I just love that uh, you can tell that the people that are being controlled by the worms are still conscious, yeah. even though they, they, they can't control their own bodies That's because tough. they'll yell at you, please kill me, as they're coming at you and attacking you. Sorry. I, I, exactly. What I, I didn't care for, again, design model and some of those things. I do like the concept especially how it plays out in the audio logs without giving too much yeah. away. Some of the people that you've become somewhat familiar with because you've been following their history start to change. Mm -hmm. And that, that was interesting to, to follow for sure. Yeah. So I uh, like the concept of any kind of like psychic hive mind alien that makes it very scary. Nolan, you talk about them talking to you, but like when you hear 
the the voice of the mini i guess it's always yeah. this layered like uh-huh. you've got a feminine voice and a and a deep you know more masculine voice layered and it's yep. it's unsettling for sure aged i think there are some things about it being a pc title that age well we'll go back to that complimentary kenny and some things Agreed. that you feel the age so more on the negative side of things mm. A little bit. Kenny, what's one or two complimentary things? Okay, well, I mean, we talk about this all the time, but generally just even support and access. Like, sometimes older PC games are very tough to play. Correct. This game, depending on when you were playing it after it had released, kind of sure. went through ups and downs but now, of, of viability. because. But throughout that whole process has had community mod support because it's a popular game to help it sort of have access, you know, be fixed, has had even some ongoing developer support over different times with re-releases and fixes and ownership of the game, you know, moving and whatever else. But now we are at a place where you can get this game relatively easily. You hop on Steam, you hop on GOG, it's going to be available, it's going to run on your modern systems. That's a big thing for older PC titles that usually speaks to popularity because really it's just the effort to do that, either was there or not but it's worth pointing out that it is there for this game and you're not going to have a hard time playing it if you want to yeah super easy to boot up super easy to play works with your system i'll give you another one okay another one the engine it uses uses is called the dark engine um (gasps) and i think it is a very solid engine um it in the way that it felt familiar again to things like valve schemes um and maybe even like deus ex although a slower pace in in that case um and i and these newer versions of it that you'll find on gog i think have a, a, an updated version of the dark engine called new dark and it just it it it's smooth it, i think it's a a very smooth pc playable game because that's also a thing we come across sometimes where it's an issue I don't know if this specifically has to do with age, but but the interface, in-game interface, is not one that I that I love. Um, th- some there can be such a thing as too much going on and too many options, and if I have to go down to the bottom and click the question mark to go click another item to find out everything about it over and over again. Uh, from from the grid based thing to the different like even like switching out ammo or psionic abilities was not the most smooth so i just the whole interface that was going very pc i mean even at the top you've got this like command prompt bar uh that that when you hover over something it will tell you what that item is up there um i i don't hate that but like everything is very pc it feels very 1999 pc and yeah i I think that's that's a particular taste and it's not one that i particularly enjoy Hmm. interesting um because again i i don't think it's done perfectly here and i do think that there is an argument that with sort of the layers of complexity of things that are going on they could have sort of separated those out a little bit better just so kind of like each thing had its own sort of just defined space and whatever else. Um, But generally I felt like buttons did things that looked like what they did. They were accessible. They were findable. um, And I, I thought, I thought the problem was they were trying to manage a game that had a whole bunch of options. Yeah. And, and there might've been a way to like, acknowledge that complexity better but that the actual like menuing itself to do that i felt like they did about as good a job as as you could have at least on that time but i'm also kind of a purist and and do like that era and nowadays when we play stuff and everything looks the same and half of your pc menus look like gamepad controllers because people are going to pull them up all right and, all right. Menu, the wheel. and i scoff because <laughs> i like i get why they do it but like it doesn't feel ideal to me like that feels like the trade-off yeah anyhow i was i was fine with it um but but i get it it's it's got a it's got a vibe and there is a lot going on here Bill, did you feel any of that UI stuff? 
Oh, totally. Yeah, it, it does feel pretty no, no, aged to me. Um, quick question for you guys, though. Um, did you take a look through the manual? I did The physical manual? Or is there a, di right. a di uh, one in well, the game? Well, yeah. <laughs> There's one on Steam you can look through that oh, was no. printed out and came with the game originally. No, but I bet it's very long. <laughs> 35 pages or so. But uh, there That's is a bad. thing... There is a spot at the back of the manual where actually Ken Levine writes developer notes. And he does say that there are three sticking points they had to really work on, and Interface was one of them. Ooh. Wow. So they're aware. Do you know the other two off the top of your head? Yeah. Uh, the other one was keeping the persistent world, keeping track of where all your items dropped sure. were in each zone. Which is crazy. Yeah, and that's then, tricky. And uh, pacing. Because for me, the early game can be pretty slow. And then it really, really picks up like on deck three, and then gets pretty slow again near the end game. But yeah, I think the pacing has some problems too. I'm surprised it's... you didn't say graphics. <laughs> well, well no, it's at the time, got though. pretty decent graphics for the time. No, oh, yeah, listen, for the time. no, 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 no. I disagree. I yes, um, environmentally, I think the graphics are 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 decent for the time. Character models, if. It, Maybe I'm misremembering 1999, but the I, I posted in Discord this week a picture of, of my guy's face when I turned around. But like there, the and, and the first creature that runs at you, these things look like um like a third grader did some finger painting. <laughs> I do I do think you're misremembering. Uh, for for example, let me just say a game that I know you love. GoldenEye doesn't look this bad. Oh, GoldenEye looks way worse than this. No. And that's absolutely they what both I, was I knew you were really going bad. to do that. Um, no, GoldenEye absolutely. looks bad, but yeah. you can tell what's going on. It's a it's a wrapper around. Uh, but the um the creature but GoldenEye looks way worse. It doesn't. Okay, well the main wrong. character looks really bad. <laughs> I'll say that. You're yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You don't ever see yourself. You do. You do. In a few cutscenes. In a few cutscenes, and oh. he just looks like, that's what I've been looking like. <laughs> and no, I'll give uh, Dustin that, but um, I think the environment is is good and fine. It's I not. It, I mean, it's pretty flat. Uh, it's lacking you, texture often. But yes. that was the thing you got in '99, I think, especially. I do give that on PC. So, I love this era of PC graphics. There's something. It's it's hard for me not to be just like nostalgic about it and ignore those flaws. But there are there are some some pretty strong flaws here, and it it is in the character models more so. But it's not distracting. It's not to a point where it's like. Uh, That's it. Like, or at least for me, my, I don't think my it was question like, always. Yeah is are these ba graphics bad enough or poorly implemented enough that when I go back and try and play the game that I can't get to that point of immersion? Uh, and right. I felt like they weren't there for, I mean, Same. they were they were good enough for me to still feel immersed okay. and in the space. I did not. And, and like you can Just watch in my first play, that first thing that ran at me, yeah, visually, appalling and it's fine for them to be well, they, sure, they're supposed the to point. be but but it's not just it's not just a, about that it's not like just an unsettling thing it's like the the design thing um but and, and then the way that it the fight went down it felt like cardboard it felt uh and then the way that they did it got damaged and fell to the ground it all felt uh i i it all felt so. mechanical and and not the look great. on your face there, I interpret it as you being like disturbed by no what you just had to do and the noise it made. You were See, recoiling at the visuals. Yeah, no, no. I thought you were recoiling at the at the way f the fight happened more, at the mechanics so of something. like doing <laughs> hand to hand combat. It was the visual. It was the response the enemy had or didn't have to my wrench. It was the it was the entire mm. experience that just felt. And that wasn't the only time. That was the first time. And I felt that as I continued of just like this, um, yeah, just this stilted, like stiff, not reactive. It, it all just they felt. They spent more time on the storytelling and the immersion yes. and the RPG elements and the vibes and good. the lighting and the music lighting. than they spent on, like, making sure combat felt super, you know, like, real-time or dynamic. Because that's what the game is. And so I can forgive it. 
but I, I understand where you're coming from because there is a little bit of kind of clunky jank there. The soundtrack is right up my alley. It's not what you would expect. It's like techno drum and bass in space. And no, Nolan plays survival horror video game soundtrack music to go to sleep. Well, no, it's got that. It's got the eerie ambience, but they will slap you across the face out of nowhere with a beat drop when combat happens. And every time it happened, I was happy. It was, it, it felt right. Like, that sounds wrong for a game like this. You would expect it to maybe have not much of a soundtrack at all and just kind of be creepy, and it has that. But it also has just some banger tracks that were, of course, appropriate for 99. That was the thing in 99. And it just it doesn't work here, but it kind of super works. I don't know. I, I loved it. Strongly disagree. <sighs> I, I think the... Uh, it does well on the ambient side of things when there is no music and it's just the ship and the and the noises that you're hearing around. But when you like that, the voices, you like when you hear the voices talking to you. The mini, I don't. We can talk yeah. about the voice acting on the on the audio logs you find because I think that's a whole nother thing. But the when the techno droning thing came on when and when I swear the track is only ten seconds long with the worst loop back and. It is loud, loud, and it goes on way too long after the threat's already been neutralized. I hate it any time the techno songs Ugh. came on. You know Worse, you set hey. the volume on your computer, right? Do you know that they preset it in the way that they think is right, Kenny? No, it was so good. You know, you're crazy. What do you mean so good? It was so good. <laughs> Bill, Bill didn't know he was coming on here to be the uh, tiebreak <laughs> voice of opinion. Sure. But we need, we need a third party opinion here. Tell us your okay. thoughts on how it looks, how it sounds, like all those ages. And do you go to the club like Nolan and go do 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 with your oh, fist in the air? <laughs> so uncultured. Right. Uh, as a point of reference for the music, this did come out like four months after The Matrix. <laughs> Oh, that's why Nolan. That's that makes yep. sense as for why Nolan. Likes Heavy it. Matrix yeah, right? vibes. Yeah, the, uh, for the yeah the character models are definitely dated. Um, I think they're okay for the for the time, but they are on the low end, like early PS one ish era, when this came out more towards the end of the PS one timeline. Um, I, I really adore the environments, though. Uh, all, all of them, especially like Deck three with the hydroponics. And uh, deck five with the recreation area. That those are probably my two favorites. The the later areas in the game aren't aren't as well designed. I don't think. I don't think they might have run out of time because they only had about a year and a half to develop this game. Dang. Um, yeah. Um, and this was like you said, um, built on the Dark Engine, which was made originally for Thief the Dark project, which focused heavily on lighting Lights, yeah. and um, vision cones and such for the people trying to detect you so that's where like they got the cameras and uh, uh things like that for the engine um that voice acting for some of the logs if not all of them are developers no they're high school yes. high schoolers well uh I and mean, they're just whoever that in sound class room and said hey, okay come make good come thank god in front of the thank mic. god <laughs> And read this line with <laughs> no emotion or inflection. Especially when you're, you know, having to run from an enemy or something. I yeah. thought the voice lines were a little bit better when it was just kind of like calm narrating something happening. But when they were supposed to be scared or afraid and they just delivered the most bland line. Just flat, no and, EQ. Just and that. the little image of like the, the doctor would be an older man. And I swear it would it's be an 18 year old boy. <laughs> Tell like get, delivering the line. Yeah, it's that that part they they phoned in a bit, but where it mattered, like you said, with the mini, totally works. Oh yeah, mini and they works. They spent the the resources there, but for for the optional stuff, it was the developers. Yeah. Hey, kids. hey, come here. That's come good. Here. Yeah, as, guy, as someone was walking by the office. Yeah. that's absolutely true. The OG System Shock. By the way, Bill. Did you play OG System Shock before System Shock 2? Was System Shock 2 your entrance into the System Shock series? Or have you yet to play System Shock? I definitely did not play System Shock 1 first. It is 
the original one is very very jank it is hard to control the interface is terrible oh, it's wow. like Doom. um uh it <laughs> may look graphic wise like doom but it controls nothing at all like it ah, um, okay there is a remake that came out last year, though, and yeah. I have played some of that. I haven't finished it yet, but it is Ooh. significantly better. It takes a lot of cues from System Shock 2 and Bioshock and how it plays. And it's, well, highly recommended also. If you want a copy of System Shock 2 for your PC, you can get that. I mean, you can just get it on Steam or GOG or something like that. It was for it's on sale for like $2 this last week, but I think the normal is maybe $10. Uh, 9.99 yeah nine, on steam and gog 9.99 is ten dollars and if you but if you do want a physical copy that's twelve dollars used or loose it's two hundred dollars new why would you buy that well rather collector. than just for your it's video game collection because yeah, you can't right. use the cd for anything <laughs> final thoughts at the end of each and every one of our episodes, we give our final concluding thoughts on the Retro Game of the Week. This time, we're giving our final thoughts on System Shock 2. Nolan, what did you think about the game? Like I said earlier, I was really anticipating this game. It came up many times on sale on Steam in the past, and I passed it up thinking and believing we were probably going to play it on the show at some point, because I know a lot of people love this game, and I was right. But it finally rolled around, and I had always heard and we mention it sometimes, that it Bioshock was a spiritual successor of this game. And as for that being true, they think that. Like, Ken <laughs> thinks that. So it's probably, you know, it is what it is. But it came, it didn't come across to me that way. Um, there's a lot of similarities. Uh, the Yes, it's a FPS story game. It's got hacking. It's got the pneumatic chamber respawning. It's got a lot of similarities, but I can't act like the story and the writing is up there with Bioshock. And to me, this game is more about the mechanics under the hood than it is, and more the sim simulation aspect of the genre than it is the story drive and narrative. The Von Braun ain't Rapture. Uh, it's almost more of a sci-fi playground, and I actually really enjoyed it for that reason. Um, some of, like, specking into your character gave you a lot of flexibility. I, I do think they may, they missed it a little bit on the balance of that, of character building, but there's huge replayability factor here because of the different options that you can choose and the different specializations that you can go, and I think that's always a great thing. And it's fun to explore the the ship, so I'm I'm really glad that it, it finally came around, and I know about it now, and kind of get into like Ken Levine's head before Bioshock. Kenny, um, yeah. So this is an influential game that still brings all the same mood and vibes that it had when it came out originally. Um, there is a reason that this one makes lots of top game lists. And a reason that it's a beloved enough game to make it onto somebody's director's pick. So I'm not surprised by any of those things. It's got a nice challenge, lots of ways to play. The graphics and sound are good enough that despite being dated, you can still get into the game and experience the story that they're trying to tell. Um, yes, there's a bit too much menuing, which could have been cleaned up. But I think the tab system and some of their underlying solutions to this worked well, considering the complexity didn't break the game for me overall excellent game um if you didn't play it along with us anyways this week it's worth considering checking it out i am glad that we played it because i am glad to know where bioshock and other games came from bioshock is probably an unfair direct comparison simply because Bioshock came out a considerable sure. amount of time after yeah, this yeah. one, right? Yeah. So there's plenty of time to, to learn and grow. And I think that they did. Bioshock is not a perfect game, but you can really see how it took some of these early concepts and really had mastery of them in, in, in a lot of respects. Um, I, I struggle with... Look, I like sci-fi books. I like sci-fi worlds. Mass Effect, great, right? 
but there's something about this Deus Ex System Shock 2. I a lot of it probably has to do with the interface. Some of it has to do with the way that the story is presented that doesn't really work for me. Another thing related to the story that is so unfortunate, and I get why they had to do it. They had this story set up at the beginning of this game. But in doing so, for anybody that's paying attention, it's giving away the story you're about to encounter. In fact, without knowing anything, I don't know if I had to cut it. I think it made it into the edit uh, on, on my first play. I think I say what is about to happen, and the the twist isn't really as much of a twist. No, as they think it's it not is. Bioshock. Yeah. It's not Bioshock, <laughs> which fair. Bioshock blew me and many others away at the time. So, um, all of that being said, it, it seems that it was very innovative for the time. That it was ahead of the time on on many things, and um, and. Uh, I see it for what it is, a stepping stone to something, in my opinion, that ended up becoming far greater in Ken's later work. And as people made game immersive Sims birthed out of this movement here, I think it only got better. So this is one of those games like last week's game, which shall not be named on this podcast, that I feel like the, the ones that came after it did it so much better that... Uh, for, for, for some people, it might be worth knowing about, but play the newer ones because they definitely worked out the kinks. You have been drinking the Haterade lately, uh, and not just this week. I don't know what's wrong with you. Kenny, uh, there's a lot wrong with me. Um, oh, that was all. Oh, no, Kenny, it is. That your, no, that's all three of us. Yeah. No, of us. that's Bill to come in with the final word and tell everybody why I and Nolan presumably are right Bill's, and just how wrong you are about this beloved game. Bill's got a fair and balanced opinion. I'll try. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously, I said earlier that this is in my top five games of all time, so I do actually like it better than Bioshock. But I, I am a systems person. I very much enjoy yeah. the character building more so than the story or the environment that it, it's presented in. There we go. So uh, I love replaying this game, trying different character builds. I always play on hard now. Sometimes I even try on possible, but that's not easy by any means. Um, Impossible. Um, yeah. Um, there are definitely points that I wish were improved on. Graphics being the biggest one. But the sound design, the... the uh, overall atmosphere of the game gets me every time i love the um the, the like the ghost flashbacks of seeing people what they were doing and like the week prior because i think you said you, i think they, they say that you lost a week's worth of memory so it's only been about a week since things started going crazy but um um but yeah um uh Love this game big time, and uh, I totally understand all of your opinions. There's um, the, the majority opinion would say that Bioshock did it better, and I can definitely see that in the story, and definitely see that in the graphics. But I, I enjoy the systems better in this game. I enjoy the character building so much, and I, it is a bit unbalanced. But there is a mod I use that, that rebalances things, makes it way ah. more useful to get certain things like. Uh, Exotic weapons are generally not very good, but they get buffed with this add-on. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks, everybody, for your opinions on this. And uh, Everybody except us, right? Yeah. yeah. It, to oh. it, to it totally vibed with me, too, so I can... I you can already said your piece. And, well, I know. Well, no, no, <laughs> Nolan said funny. it. I just want to point it out one more time. Uh, the way they start this game, we talk about class selection, but both the tr but the training module and the like class selection being like so tight and integrated well into the story giving you like lore reasons to go through all of that you experience piece on top notch that was a gameplay piece from a half hour ago <laughs> uh that I, we didn't talk about right you can't bring Sometimes it up right you gotta now plop the cherry on the top of that the sunday the after you've made the rest of the sunday if you put the cherry on first then it's gonna be buried in ice cream come on in my opinion, this game is one that is ripe for a, a remake. And I don't think that they've got one planned or scheduled. I three. think they have a System yeah. Shock 3. was announced. 
But no. Tencent acquired the rights, which was, but that was I think it was also announced back in like 2015. Yeah, it or might something. be dead. 19. Yeah. Uh, Night Dive Studios is making an enhanced edition. It should be coming out in, in about a year, I think. Oh. Up to? Okay. Yes. Nice. Is this an enhanced edition? So it's not new graphics or anything, but it's including all of the most popular mods into the game by default. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was gonna say some of those mods were. I did. I installed one. Um, and oh, it was very helpful. <laughs> yeah, it's you. just a. It, it's a. Uh, it removes some glitches. Oh, okay. Makes it more playable. Those are our thoughts on System Shock 2. What did you think on our YouTube poll? 35% said yes, it's worth playing today. 3% said no, but 61% have never played before. Dang. That's a lot of people. The time in the console? Is, c- PC no, only? Yeah, you, no port? YouTube is full of 12-year-olds. Why are you against YouTube today? You've had a couple comments. Many from our community played along and wrote in. Mal said, this game was an interesting visit. For some parts, there is some aging, but not something that you'll struggle getting over it. Combat is sort of jank, but also the kind where you can abuse it a bit to gain an advantage, so it's fine. Graphically, it looks old in some areas, but it still has a very clear aesthetic that makes this enjoyable to look and a non-issue. Soundtrack is solid, a bit too loud sometimes. Do they know that turn they can just turn volume. it down? See, I knew you'd say it. Also a pretty good <laughs> VA, too. And it's control. it controls very well. Never played any Bioshock games, but this game impressed me by its merits alone. Overall, it's just a very easy game to go and give a try. Easy in GP. Yeah. Great PC. That, this era of PC is so good. It's hard to go wrong. Shane said, it feels like this game has hooked me fairly well, where Bioshock didn't for some reason. Seeing its similarities to Bioshock is definitely interesting, but where it differs is almost as fascinating. The huge amount of RPG elements and overwhelming you with you choosing your build right at the start definitely reminds me a quiet bit of Deus Ex. But the more linear play of this compared to that definitely made it more accessible to me. The 3D graphics are fairly bad, and that can definitely detract in places, but it's able to shine past those to keep me playing ngp from me if they were to make a remake a full remake they'd have to decide do we lean survival horror do the dead space thing or or do more of the rpg side i think that would be interesting to see where they would land bill have you played dead space i have not no i, I it was you need to uh, free on psn last month i think oh, so wow. i actually have it now but so now, now it doesn't have the, th- the some of those rpg mechanics that you're talking about and like but it is a spaceship that has been taken over and so o- old humans are now f- coming after you in distracting ways. It's it's very comparable in a lot of ways. Garlisle said, yeah, you can see how this game le- le- led to Bioshock, all right? So pardon the comparisons. The isolated spaceship and malicious antagonist execute that horror way better than Bioshock did for me. Meanwhile, the extra RPG Ooh. elements don't feel like they're doing too much. Otherwise, my impression is much the same. I do respect this title, but this is still just not my thing. Dang. We, everybody's all over the place today. Yeah, I know. We've got some that prefer Bioshock and some that prefer this. Yeah. And then finally, Rad Mad Mal said, This has been Another in my Mal. Steam wish list. Yeah, it's crazy. Two Mal's. Uh, this has been in my Steam wish list for years. So when this got chosen and it was only 269, it was a no brainer for me. From the first moment, I was hooked. Then I started seeing the beginnings of Bioshock and how Ken Levine turned System Shock 2 into Bioshock. I think that's why I'm loving it so much. This game does not hold your hand, and it's been a blast to play blind, which I normally don't do. It gives you just enough so you (laughs) never feel super lost, but makes you figure out where to go. I thought it would be more difficult, actually, but the controls and interface have aged great. Graphically, it's my favorite era. So while I chuckle at them now, they still managed to jump scare me, and in 1999, it was amazing. Inventory management, though? Oof. How many other people kept all those elements for research in your inventory just in case? I'm only four hours in when I write this, but I will definitely be finishing the game. Two thumbs up, way up, and NGP status for me. Look up a build, trust me. You're guided now. I should have. I should have. Thank you for those of you who wrote in. You can do that each and every week to ngppodcast at gmail.com. Let us know your thoughts on the show. Uh, We'll love to include them as a part of our episode next week. For now, we're setting aside System Shock 2, and we are randomly selecting from our retro master list. In fact, the first random selection of Season 10? Oh, yeah. Yes. It is. Uh Uh-oh. Wait. We already know what it's going to be like. Yeah, because Smash Brothers was not randomly selected. I mean, it was. It's going to be games that everybody loves, but we hate. Randomizing! 
now. We're going back in time to the year 1985. Dang. Okay, way back. This is a run and gun hack and slash video game developed and published by Konami. Uh, yes. Okay. Sound, Arcade? Sounds, yes. Arcade that nice was game. then ported to the Famicom and NES. So okay. I, I think, well, I guess we can determine, but I'm probably going to spend more time on the NES uh, version this week. It, it's probably it is Arcade. It, it probably. I'll look at the differences. There, if it's majorly different, I may boot up MAME. There are some, NES is easier. There are some slight differences, but the gameplay is uh, primarily the same as what I'm reading right here. So... Okay. okay. Some differences, but the game pl the gameplay mechanics are essentially identical. So, oh, good. So, figure out how you would like to play it. Uh, it's got a different title for Japan and Europe, and a different title for us in North America. So, in Japan and Europe, it was called Green Beret, and our title is Rush in Attack. Rush apostrophe in Attack. Our title was okay. not Green Beret. No, it was rush in attack. What? Why? Because it's a play on the phrase Russian attack yeah. due to its Cold War setting. Oh. Like everything. Every, this is the 80s. Like, this oh, is yeah. peak pun for that era. Okay. Bill, have you ever played Russian attack? I have not. I've heard of it, but I have not played it. Oh, at least you've heard of it. I have not heard of it. All right, there. find a copy of Russian Attack or Green Beret for those in Europe or Japan. Play it along with us this next week. If you know about Russian Attack and you want to share your thoughts with us, or if you play it for the first time with us this week and want to share your thoughts, you can go to discord.gg slash newgameplus and go to the commentary channel and let us know there. Or hang out anywhere else on Discord. Uh, we want to say thank you to those of you who support us on Patreon.com, uh, including our newest patrons this week, uh, TJ Wilson and Swaggy Taco Fish. <laughs> <laughs> I like when y'all's names make me laugh. Who is our newest producer-level supporter? Uh, thank y'all for your support. Of course, we want to thank our director-level supporters, Bro Gem, Super Hyper, and Zigfried, and of course, and most importantly this week... Bill, uh, thank, thank you, you for uh, suggesting this game, for supporting the show, for coming and putting up with these guys and sharing your Saturday morning with us. Uh, we appreciate it. And to our many producer-level supporters as well, uh, including Alex and Marley and Anton and Ben, Craig, Dustin's 5 O'Clock, Shadow, Garlow, Guardian, Kate, Alex, Harold, Hey Brother, J. Robert, Jake, Jordan, George or Binks, Justin, Clint, Levi, Maxima, Megatroid, Miss Muso, Not Enough Dog, Rad Mac, Retro Man, Sajin, Sasser, Scotty, Shane, Shauna, Snake Maddox, Psycho Mantis, Thomas, Tins, Turtle, Unbedavable, and Zion. Thank you for your support. Thank you so much. Uh, Bill, do you want people to find you online? And if so, what are your socials? Uh, not particularly. I'm just, you can Same. you can find me in Discord at BJR3031. There we go. You can find us on our Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Our links are in the show notes. Listen directly on any podcast provider of your choice. Make sure you subscribe so that you are the first to get new NGP episodes. While you're at it, please leave a kind rating and review. Our episode artwork was created by our friend Dave. Our video episode was edited by our friend Dylan. Our audio episode was edited and produced by our friend Dan Willett. Join us next week as we play Russian Attack. Until then, I'm still the mini. I'm actually everybody. Everybody's golf. And Bill, who are you? I'm Goggles. And this has been New Game Plus. Plus.